See, I'll tell you all about it when I get back. But technically, the charge is passing counterfeit money. Mr. Holliday, you should be ashamed of yourself. All you had to do was open a charge account. Oh, no. Good night, Susie. Next week, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Two. More great entertainment from radio's Golden Past here on KNX 1070. The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. <laughs> on the KNX Drama Hour. The adventure, Trouble Hits the Trolleys. The events and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Clarion, ain't it, mister? About the streetcar. Yeah, I know all about it. Listen, kid, why don't you plug the Daily Sentinel instead of the Clarion? Huh? You're telling both of them, aren't you? Ah, uh, sure, but that don't... The Sentinel's got a better story than the Clarion ever had. No, it ain't, mister. Don't tell me, sonny. I phoned it in myself. It's all over the front page. Yeah, but it ain't as good as the Clarion story. Now, listen... Well, take a look if you don't believe me. There's a Sentinel right here. Well, I'll be... Hey, taxi! Taxi! Clarion! Look at that. Selling three clients to every one of ours. The Daily Temple office. Step on it. A fine yarn this is. Why didn't we give it an eight-column head like the Clarion? And I don't even read a byline. Yeah, sometimes I figure maybe I'm working for the wrong outfit. All this a headline. Accident. Delay streetcar service. Yeah. Then what's the matter with this taxi? I can make better time walking. <laughs> Here's the temple story of that streetcar business. Nothing like the Clarion, Mr. Reed. In case the Clarion isn't happy, unless it can be sensational. As long as I'm publisher of this paper, I'm not going to color any story to gain circulation. A lot of readers may want to read yellow journalism, but they won't get it from the Sentinel. I bet Laurie will be burned up, Mr. Reed. Laurie? Why? I imagine he expected a byline on this. Bylines are reserved for scoops or special features. Every paper in town covered this. Laurie well, knows that. He ought to. Laurie's well, one of the best reporters in the game, Miss Case. But once in a while, he lets his nose for news carry him to extremes. Well, I guess every reporter looks for sensation. Miss Case, there's something behind these accidents that doesn't strike me as being on the level. Well, I did notice that there weren't any until about the last month or so. Just when this man Fisher starts a campaign to operate buses in place of the streetcars. Hey, Mr. Reed, I didn't notice that. What's going on around here, Casey? The Clarion's beating a three for one up. Oh, hello, Mr. Reed. On the streetcar story, is that it, Larry? Well, yeah, that's it, boss. Of course, I know there weren't any passengers injured, and there was no real damage to speak of. The Sentinel said that, Larry. Well, I guess the Clarion stretched the truth a little. A little? They called it a panic. Any sign of panic that you saw, Larry? No, one dame fainted when the door jammed, that's all. The Clarion would call a bargain sale at a dress counter a panic. But look, boss, I don't usually go out on a limb this way about a small-time accident. Only with that battle about the bus franchise coming up before the city council, this stuff is new. Not the way you think, Lowry. Huh? You recognize the name Fisher? The guy who's angling for the bus franchise? Well, what's your opinion of him? Offhand, I don't like him. Well, that's the feeling of most people. Nothing's ever been proved against him, has it, Mr. Reed? No, Miss Case. He's very clever. He may get his buses. Yes, Lowry. 
A month ago, the city council would have laughed at his demand. They're not laughing now. Yeah, but don't you get it? Doesn't it strike you as odd that the streetcar line should start running into trouble right when Fisher starts his campaign? One more accident and he'll get that franchise. Say, I must have been wearing blinders not to see it before. It's as plain as the nose on my face. Plainer, if possible. Lowry, I want to find out what's going on. You and me both, boss. If Fisher's responsible for the trouble that Charlie's been having, the Sentinel wants to know it. Okay, I'll start digging up dope on Fisher. Where he goes, who he sees, what he does, everything. Make it good and you get that byline. Right. And uh, get me the district attorney, Miss Casey. He might have some stuff that'll prove useful. So Fisher's the baby to go after. Get the district attorney and put the call through to Mr. Reed's wire. Are you still alone, Raleigh? Casey? There's one thing that burns me up. Do tell, because you didn't get a byline. No, no, it's the clarion. Selling three papers to wire one. It isn't right. The Sentinel could use a scoop, Lowry. You're telling me. The next time trouble hits the trolleys, all I wish for is that Fisher's in the middle of it. The middle of the wreck? No, pal, the middle of the story. I hope you're right, but I... Yeah, I know, I know, Fisher's too smart. But you heard the boss. I'm going after him anyway. Absolutely no trouble, Grady. If not a soul suspects those accidents weren't genuine. Then what more do you want? Plenty. The city council already has my report. Those reports aren't strong enough. Listen, Fisher, there's a limit. When the limit is reached, I'm the one who'll call a halt, Grady, not you. Now, hold on. The city you council can... will never act on reports like yours. If you want stronger reports, you've got to have tougher accidents. You're the city inspector, aren't you? Sure. Then fake those reports. There's a limit to what I can fake, Fisher. When a door jams, I can't make it look like a smack-up. If the brakes stick, I can't say there ain't no brakes at all. Why not? Too many people can check up on me, that's why. That bus franchise is going through, Grady. I don't care how. That's your business. And yours. If you want any dough from me, you'll see that. Yeah? I get this, Fisher. I'm in with you, sure. I can use a cut of the gravy you're heading for, same as anyone else. I'm making my reports as strong as possible without no one getting wise, eh? You better. Now, you get that man of yours in the car barns to do a job on one of those streetcars so it'll really crack up. And what? I'll turn in a report that will spell ruin for the streetcar company just like that. You'll be in, Fisher. The ones we have aren't strong enough, huh? You'd be taking a chance. Fix another accident and you can't miss. In that case, I might as well make sure. Now, are you talking? I'll get in touch with my man at once. This time, there'll be plenty for you and a district attorney, too. You can't go in there. I am in, sister. By what right are you... I'm to bust in like this, Mr. Fisher, but I had a deadline to meet. Oh, you're a reporter. Yeah, that's different to have a chair. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, nice place you got here, Mr. Fisher. Wish the Daily Sentinel would do as well by us. The Daily Sentinel? I think maybe I'll be on my way. Hey, if I'm interrupting something... No, no, not at all. Goodbye, Fisher. Guy sure was in a hurry. He, uh, he had an engagement. Isn't he Grady, the city inspector? Who? Grady. Works for the city. No. No, just a friend of mine. Now, what can I do for you, Mr., uh... uh what did you say your name was? I didn't say, but it's Lowry. Oh, yes, yeah, Lowry, with the Daily Sentinel. Say, what happened to you boys on that streetcar story? We had it. The clarion played it up big. <laughs> it wasn't important enough. Not important? Think how many people ride on those streetcars. A lot. The lives of hundreds, thousands of people may be in constant danger, and you call it unimportant. Get off the soapbox, Fisher. Everyone knows your angle. Of course they do. I want my bus franchise to go through because the streetcar line is mismanaged, antedated, and a menace to the citizens of this city. Buses are better, huh? Much better. There's no comparison. Now, why don't the Sentinel get smart and help in my campaign? Like the clarion, huh? Exactly. How about it, Lowry? How about what? You're in a position to do me some good, Lowry. You mean uh, a nice little follow-up story on the streetcar accident? Placing the blame on the management of the company? That's the idea. Or maybe an editorial? Sure. Who knows? I might be able to do a favor for you in return. It sounds pretty nice. Sure it is. I knew as soon as you came in the door, you were a smart guy. What do you say? Why, you chiseling, lying crook. You no good scheming grafter? Huh? Now see here. You'll see here. Try to bribe me, will you? Bribe a reporter. If you weren't smaller than me, I'd plaster you flatter than that rug. Get out of my office. It's a pleasure. And get this, Fisher. The Sentinel is going after you with both barrels. If this bus franchise of yours is as phony as you are, then all I hope is I am the guy who writes it up. Boy, oh boy, will I scorch you. <laughs> that two-pint reporter talking to me that way. After I get through with that streetcar company, there won't be enough left. Brian? You know who this is? Now, I want you and that will to get busy. Now, that's right. Make it a real crack up this time. The worst the streetcar's ever had.
That will. Yeah? What do you want, Moran? Put down that wrench. We got a job to do. You mean for that... Never mind the name. What's the next car going out? Number 618. Right over there. Okay. Come on. What's it going to be this time? The brakes? Another jam door? Get in your lip and get moving. We're getting twice as much dough for this one. We're giving up the works. Can you tell me where I get the streetcar for Parsons Avenue, officer? Oh, right here, lady, at the bottom of this hill. Thank you. Well, that's her now, just starting down the hill. It's coming awfully fast. Hey, look at that trolley. Why would he stop? He's out of control. He's heading this way. Look out, it's going crash! report of the streetcar accident shows that the cause of the crash was faulty safety equipment. There is definite evidence of criminal negligence on the part of the streetcar company. Signed, Grady, City Inspector. The City Council hereby calls a special meeting to vote on the bus franchise. Signed, Hopkins, Chairman of the City Council. District Attorney for this city, I am indicting the officials of the streetcar company for criminal negligence resulting in injury to passengers. Signed, Martin, District Attorney. I went over the whole setup with a fine tooth comb. There's not a single string leading to Fisher. What about Grady? Uh, not a thing. He's calling on Fisher while you were there. Oh, I knew it was him, but he's in the clear. His report on the crack-up has been checked and double-checked. And if he wants to place the blame squarely on the streetcar officials, who's to stop him? Those two new men in the car barns, you got anything on them? Moran and Edwell? You say they've been spending money freely. Did they explain it? Yeah, claim they wanted betting on a horse. Hmm. Try to check up on that. Well, his boss was stymied. It's airtight all the way. Gosh, I hate to think of a man like Fisher getting away with a stunt like this. Me too, Casey. Sometimes I'd like to take the law into my own hands. What? Well, honestly, Mr. Reed, isn't that the only way to catch these crooks? Oh, Casey, hold on. There's only one gent who can get away with that stuff. And you don't look like the Green Hornet to me. Am I right, boss, or am I right? Huh? He says I don't look like the Green Hornet, Mr. Reed. Yes, nobody listens to me around here. No, I heard you, Laurie. I, uh... I was just uh, thinking... That evening, while Britt Reed was in his apartment, he spoke to Cato, his valet, and the only living man to know that Britt Reed is really the dreaded Green Hornet. And that's the whole story, Cato. Fisher has his tracks covered from every angle. What about Adwell Milan, Mr. Britt? No good, Cato. Even if those two could be charged with the crime of damaging the streetcar, even if they were picked up, it wouldn't help to catch Fisher. Why not? There's no actual evidence to connect him with Fisher. He could deny he ever heard of them. You look for something? Writing paper. Oh, here it is. Here's the ink. Oh, I don't want this ink. There'll be some of the other in this drawer. Yeah, here we are. I want the mask and gun, Cato. The car. Is the black beauty ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Quite a job disguising my handwriting. Now, my seal on the bottom. Placing the letter in his pocket, but Reed went through a secret panel in his clothes press. With Cato, he walked through a narrow passage within the walls of the apartment house, then downstairs to the supposedly abandoned warehouse that housed the sleek black car of the Green Hornet. Ready? All right, get in. Once more, the powerful black car roared through the city streets, carrying the Green Hornet on his errand of justice. Curtain falls on the first act of our Green Hornet adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. All you need to know.